Detectives have discovered homicide victim Kiana Collins and her accused killer, Stormy Kofer, clashed many times before the fatal shooting on October 21st. Both were in love with a young man named Blage. For a month before the shooting, they were fighting. Mutual friend Jernisha Jenkins explains Blaze actively tried to pit the two young women against each other. Blaze played a big part in everything. He was telling Kiana one thing, he'll tell Stormy something else. He'll go back and tell Kiana something that Stormy supposedly said when she never even had any knowledge of what was going on. According to Jernisha, between Stormy and Kiana, it was Kiana who seemed more willing to take the battle to the next level. Kiana threatened her a few times and said, I'm going to come to the house and uh, said, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to hurt you, and I'm going to hurt your kids. And on October 9, 2013, two weeks before the murder, Kiana took the fight all the way to Stormy's front door. Kiana was kicking and screaming for her to come outside and fight. She was like, come to the street, you be. Stormy was telling her, I got my kids, I don't want to fight. She told Stormy, you're going to have to see me eventually. Jernisha explains that after several more minutes, Kiana finally left. But later that week, the two rivals had another run in. Stormy is pumping gas a few days before the shooting. She looks up, she sees Kiana and Blaze is in the car with Kiana. Jernisha tells detectives Blaze encouraged Kiana to block Stormy's car. Kiana and Blaze, they were laughing, they were yelling things out the window. Blaze appeared to be very proud of the fact that these women were in competition for him. And for Kiana, these are all the acts of love for Blaze. Hey, I got you. I'm your woman. You tell me to go handle whoever. I'll go handling. Kiana was going to make it known Blaze was her man. After minutes of threats and shouting, Kiana and Blaze finally decided to back off. Kiana eventually backs up her car and allows Stormy to leave. Jernisha tells detectives that once she heard about the incident, she encouraged both women to make amends. And I always try to tell them, y'all mad at each other over him. It really just don't make no sense for y'all to be beefing. Jernisha says that on October 20th, the day before the shooting, she brokered a conversation between the two rivals. They want to talk like two women. Nobody was yelling. I didn't have to stand in the middle of them. They showed each other their phones, and they saw that Blaze was behind a lot of this, and he was stirring the pot. Everything was going on, it was basically because of Blaze. When we walked off, everything was good. It wasn't no problem. Everyone said it was over. The feud was over. But the truth lasted less than 24 hours. It was supposed to be squashed. And the very next day, it was something new. Jernisha explains that on the morning of the shooting, Blaze found out that Stormy and Kiana had reached a detente and was none too pleased. Blaze immediately called Kiana to reignite the feud. He told Kiana that Stormy said something about her, something that he told her to get it started back up. It was a lie. He kind of did whatever he can to kind of keep that manipulation, and I think, I think that, that spawned the hatred of Kiana towards Stormy. I think it was just a form of control. Jernisha says after Kiana's phone call with Blaze, Kiana was driving down the street when she spotted Stormy. Basically, Stormy was coming up the street. Kiana was coming the other way. They make eye contact. They recognize each other. All of a sudden, Kiana tries to run Stormy's car off the road. Kiana wasn't going to stop. They were about to do a head-on collision. Mommy took her car and swung it. She literally had to drive it to the curb. Kiana played chicken with the car. 
She kept going like nothing, like, oh, well, you know, she kept going. Jernisha says that after the incident, Stormy was enraged. Stormy got fed up with it. She just was tired. She just was like, you know, I'm tired of messing with me. I'm not going to go back my hand fight her. At this point, Stormy is thinking, we're going to do this. Let's do it. Let's get it over with. Later that afternoon, Stormy and Kiana agreed to meet up and settle their score in the middle of the street, once and for all. This was going to be the end of it. They probably could have fought all day long. But if the plan was to settle the score with their fists, something went dangerously wrong. And as detectives examine how the feud went from fisticuffs to full-blown homicide, rival eyewitness accounts offer two conflicting versions of the shooting. There's two different stories with how this went down. Witnesses almost broke down into teams that were either on Stormy Ofer's team or Kiana Collins' team. The feud between recent shooting victim Kiana Collins and the woman who allegedly pulled the trigger, Stormy Kofer. They had these altercations over and over again. Jernisha Jenkins, a friend of both women, tells detectives that the rivalry's real instigator is neither Stormy nor Kiana, but the man who's been romantically involved with both of them, 30-year-old Blaze Roberts. It looks like Blaze is fully aware of each one of these women, what their insecurities are, and has had a relationship with both of them. At that time, he's with Kiana, and so he has the ability to talk to her and control her to cause an interaction where he is the center of attention between these two young women. They're texting and emailing. There was constant threats going back and forth, constant trash talking. They hated each other, all behind blades. Jernisha explains that after a dangerous encounter on the road earlier that day, the two rivals decided to settle their differences with their fists. They do the quad park, they jumped out, they started fighting. Kiana threw Stormy to the ground, striking her repeatedly in the process. But Stormy eventually got the upper hand. It has built up, and Stormy is enraged with the progression of the behaviors of taunting, of bullying. After getting the best of Kiana, Stormy decided to inflict even more damage. Once I seen Stormy was coming back to the car to grab a bat, that's when I jumped out and I tried to break them up. Jernisha says after that, Kiana wanted another chance to fight Stormy. Kiana is upset because she lost the fight, so she's mad and wanting a rematch. Stormy was fearful for her life. Jernisha tells detectives that afternoon, she, along with Stormy's new boyfriend, Wesley Nance, tried to calm Stormy's fears by riding with her to her class. Her friends are having some concern for Stormy, saying, let's leave, ride with us. Jernisha explains that shortly before class, Stormy passed by the convenience store on Lee Street, where the situation once again came to a head. When the vehicle turns onto the street, Stormy and Kiana make eye contact. They recognize each other, and Kiana starts walking towards the car to make her presence known. Kiana's friends got in front of that car. So the vehicle that was driven could not be moved. Jernisha tells detectives that what happened next is all a blur. Stormy picks the gun up and began to wave the gun around. The next thing you know, the gun went off. Detectives are suspicious. All eyewitness accounts from the scene paint Stormy as the aggressor, not Kiana and her friends. But Jernisha is adamant. She says Stormy's new boyfriend, Wesley Nance, can corroborate her story. Wesley was the driver of the car when the shooting took place. Later that evening, detectives bring Wesley in for questioning. He tells detectives the shooting was in no way premeditated. 
It was an accident. It just happened. It was just a messed up situation on both parts. Wesley goes on to explain how the shooting unfolded. Wesley's driving the vehicle, and Stormy's in the passenger side. Stormy's friend, Jernisha Jenkins, is in the back seat. The vehicle turns onto the street where Kiana was walking with some friends. They happen to be coming from across the street. Immediately, a crowd recognized the car. They recognized Stormy. The girls started jumping around, saying, there she is, there she is, that bitch. Emotions were flying, everybody getting bucked up, getting excited. These young ladies are continuously taunting. Wesley claims Kiana then approached the driver's side of the car. The window was down, and they were passing words from the car. Kiana even pulled on the door handle. Wesley says they felt surrounded. Kiana, who had been threatening Stormy for over a month, was trying to get inside the car. Stormy is aware that Wesley's gun is in the car. The gun was on the floorboard. She picks the gun up. And in an effort to scare off this crowd, she waves the gun. Wesley tells detectives he believes Stormy had no intention to fire. Stormy takes the gun, pointed towards the window. Wesley sees as his gun is really close to his face. She never pulled the trigger. The gun just went off. After Stormy fires the shot, they speed off. Wesley pulled over, made everybody get out the car. I saw me went her way. According to both Wesley and Jernisha, no one has seen Stormy since. Wesley's statement further supports the notion that Kiana was willing to do anything for Blaze, and to a degree that Stormy may have acted out of self-defense. However, Stormy must still answer for her actions. And right now, police have no idea where she is. Stormy goes into hiding. She was on the run. 